guys, how you doing today? Thanks for stopping by today and checking out the video. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell. If you like the video, hit the like button down below. And if you have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section below. Working in the shop today, I wanted to walk you through the process of taking an amazing valve and making it even better. I want to say frost resistant, but so far this winter it's been frost proof and we haven't had any freeze ups whatsoever with this modification. I think most of you can handle making this modification to the valve. Basically what we're going to do, we're going to take the valve, we're going to put a little needle valve in it, make it so it's frost resistant. The first things that we need to do with this valve is we need to tear it apart. Basically, we're just getting rid of the rubber parts because this valve I soldered in, it probably doesn't necessarily have to be soldered, but that's just what, what I do, I guess. Straighten your brass cotter pin out, pull it out. This here's your float adjustment arm. And then we have our plunger and then there's just this little rubber tip on there that goes in there and it pushes up against and shuts the flow off to the valve. There's a leather washer here that helps prevent the water from shooting out here, but all the ones that I've done so far, the water still leaks out here, but it's not an issue. So we've got that tore apart. There's a little shoulder down in here inside of this valve. And what I guess if it's facing away, I like to have mine on the right side. So what we got, what I want to do is drill a hole right here and it's going to have to be on a slight angle because if this valve, if we put it in there straight, you're not going to be able to turn it on and off in the tank. So I want to put it in there. I want to thread it in at a slight angle so it's away from the tank and we can turn it on and off. We're going to take this valve and tear it apart also. There's a little rubber piece in here and if we solder it with that rubber piece in there we're gonna mess it up naturally so we got that tore apart this is eighth inch national pipe thread pipe tap and we have we need to use a 2164 drill bit. I use cutting fluid to, to help the tapping process. It's not something that's absolutely necessary to use that tapping fluid. Tap this into here. I'm gonna drill a hole into there. And being that that's got all this stuff in here, we gotta open that up so we can get our drill bit down through there easier. I use a Dremel to cut this shoulder back. You can use a file, you don't have to necessarily use a Dremel. I just have, I happen to have a Dremel, so I'm gonna use it. And take and cut that back. That should just about do it. Kind of open it up like that a little bit. We're gonna run our drill bit down in there in an angle. We're putting this needle valve to where it's under constant pressure. You can tell, tell the puppy dogs they don't care for it much. got our hole in there if we can see that or not but it comes in on the pressure side of our valve and we'll take and tap that just takes a little just takes a drop of cutting fluid this part here you can probably skip brass is pretty soft so it's easy to tap 
try and make sure you get your tap started at the same angle your drill bit was on so you don't end up screwing your threads up. I've done five of these now. And this here makes number six. Haven't screwed any of them up yet. You know, this is how I said, haven't screwed any of them up yet. It's a definite possibility, so take your time and try and be as precise as you can, meticulous as you can. And I just run it down in there so where it's just poking through. There's not a lot of material to tap into there. Got some pretty nice threads. Actually, there's four threads there that's actually holding that, that pipe fitting in. That's why I like to solder it. You might be able to get away with thread compound to keep it from leaking. And I'll just tighten it in. Being that I didn't run my tap down in, it's gonna go in there pretty tight. And I just want the, th the end of the needle valve to come through valve body. The valve will sit in your tank like this and then your needle valve will go onto the top. Adjustment will make them a little bit shorter. And be careful you don't over tighten this into your vise. You don't want to mess these threads up. Just want it enough to hold it. For soldering, I just lead free solder. But my solder's getting old, so what I'll do is I'll clean my solder. Because one of the secrets behind being able to get a nice strong joint whenever you solder something is to make sure it's good and clean. I use flux on it, tinning flux. That helps clean it up too. I'll put some on my solder. I'll take a little screwdriver and I'll put some on my threads down in here. Helps get you a better bond. Here's my torch. Pretty good torch, it makes a lot of heat. Get her good and hot here before we start soldering. Let your material do the talking for you, I guess you could say. Once that caught or once that lead starts flowing, it flows in there nicely, but see how it's not not hot enough yet. It's almost. Yep, see how it's starting to stick? There we go. Got it. You really don't want this to leak because we're gonna probably use this valve in the summertime also. Try and get it soldered good. Looks like we got a pretty good job on it. Put a little bit there because that's the drill bit popped open a little bit. Not a big deal. I'll take take my screwdriver and knock some of this ex excess off. Not necessary to have it on there. Okay, we got her soldered up. We'll let that cool. Take a look at it there. The best solder job you've ever seen, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna hold. Next thing we need to do is we need a little piece of copper tubing for our needle valve. In a previous video, we used some of this copper tubing installing a frost-free hydrant. And I showed we just take, take our pocket knife and score it, or bend it just a little bit, and it should break right off. What I'll do with this is dip it in a little bit of flex. So I have some flex on the inside of the, and then I'm gonna take my pliers, pinch that shut. I'm gonna fold it over. If you're gonna do some soldering, I recommend you wear gloves, not like me. This here scar here, or this wound that I have on my hand that come from getting touched up against that torch. When, the, when it was still warm. We got that folded over. I wanna solder this end here shut. Careful with your copper tubing not to bend it too tight because it will collapse on you if you don't have the, the tool to, or the springs or whatever tool that's called. I don't remember the name of it that you use to, to bend copper tubing. We'll solder that up. That looks pretty good. And we want to put a hole in the end of this. With the hole in it, it actually agitates the water a little more and keeps it more open on the top of the tank. The hole I'm putting in there is going to be a sixteenth of an inch. We can bend this copper tube to whatever we want. And then that pressure, that, that spray of water coming out of there, we'll, I'll aim it up towards the float. And if it gets super cold out and it does freeze the top of the tank, that hole right where the float's going to be is going to stay open. Now we'll need a coupler. This here's gonna screw into our needle valve. Being that I bent it, it's not quite perfectly round. Put our nut on there first. It slides on there and then, this here's called a furl. This furl slides down on top of there. 
And then whenever you screw it on to here, whenever you screw it onto this coupler, it compresses that furl. And while our valve's cooling, pipe tape on, on the coupler piece to screw into the needle valve. Whenever you're putting this on, make sure you put it on the same way that the valve screws in, because if not, it will back out on you. You need two layers. It's still pretty warm yet, we'll, we'll give it a minute. And while that's cooling, I guess we can, we can knock these back so they're a little shorter. I'll use my right angle grinder to cut it off. It's still pretty hot. If you're ever using the right angle grinder, be very, very careful. These dang cutoff wheels can cut you in a hurry. Can't really see it anymore. I cut this knuckle clear across right here and ended up having to put three stitches in it in order to get it stuck back together. Pretty even. We can still turn that valve on and off. I'm gonna take a file and dress those sharp edges up so I don't have to potentially cut my fingers. I'm gonna use a piece of sandpaper for this job too, I guess. See how that, see how our, our needle valves on an angle? Because if we put that in our stock tank, you want that away from the stock tank so you can turn your this valve here, your needle valve on and off. Okay, I think we're cooled down enough. I'm gonna put a link in the description below so you can purchase one of these valves and all the stuff you need to. Doesn't have to be super tight. It's a small fitting, so you don't have to over tighten it. Our needle valve goes back in. Let's tighten down, take it back about a half a turn or so. And then it has that squish that uh, rubber seal in there so we want to just tighten it up just so it's just stiff that's off and then turn it on whenever you're below freezing now when that goes in the tank I'll bend this around like I said before be careful with the copper you don't bend it at a real super sharp angle. Our 16th inch hole there is facing up. Put our valve back together. Here's onto the tank. And I would recommend putting a bushing washer. It takes a one inch bushing washer. You may have to take a, a file and file the washer out just a, ever so slightly because this here will want to have the tendency to pull through the tank. So if you put that bushing washer on there, you won't have that tendency. Hopefully after today, you can take a, an awesome valve and make it better. Make it so it's pretty much frost free or frost resistant. We're running four tanks. We have four classes of livestock out on the land right now. We have brood cows. We have a group of calves. Yeah, we have our brood mares and our jack donkey and then we have bulls that separate it off from the herd. So we have four groups of livestock out. We're using these valves, this valve here. In every one of those tanks we haven't had a freeze up yet this winter. And I believe that you know most anybody can do this. Just take your time. Now I do have to say if you screw it up don't blame me. The average person can probably do this awesome valve and it's something that you could probably utilize you know try to keep your livestock out keep those soil nutrients where they need to be on the land if you liked the video hit that like button if you have any questions or comments post them in the section below i'm going to put a link to the if you haven't seen the insulated water tank video i'm going to put a link up to the up in the top that you can just stop by and check that out okay friends Hopefully you learned something. So long. Have a good day.